Ooh, welcome and welcome back to the channel guys real quick <laughs> real quick um I think this is a Dodge Nitro it called me out here want to know why uh, I said he had one that wouldn't start it's a Jeep product so but he didn't say Nitro as I get out here where is the dead gun I find out uh, that the it's a nitro Dodge Nitro, not a Jeep or a Jeep Nitro. I guess it can go either way. Well, no power. Okay, let me see if uh, let me see what kind of battery supply, what kind of voltage supply we have, guys. No start. This is actually a no crank. Uh, you guys know that there's a difference between a no crank and a no start <laughs> but the ending results is the same you're not moving man the battery is off so that explains the no power but be careful guys you have to wonder if it's off for a reason you know so you don't just well I wouldn't just dive right into it I will uh, you know would give it some test test peak connection okay i just heard a lot of stuff activate yes it's loose i'm soon they loose uh, loosen it to remove it let's see what's going on now this surely that ain't why i wouldn't crank or wouldn't start as far as okay i'm starting i'm running why what's the battery disconnected these are the type complaints that make you go, uh-oh. Shut up. Ah, it's making sense. They disconnect the battery because uh, obviously the horn was staying blowing. I didn't even I touched the horn in the beginning just to see if I had power. Okay, but uh, after that, I let it go. Let me see where is a freaking horn fuse or if it has one. Some of these tipums don't have a horn relay, guys. How many of y'all can read this little bitty ass writing? I have no idea where the horn fuse. I can't, I can barely see this. Boy, you can tell when you're getting up there in age. All right, guys, bear with me. I see something right here say horn, high low horn. Okay, 10 amp, 10 amp. So M22 and M23 has something to do with the horn. Now, where's M22? And 23 looks like it's this way M22 M23 M24 right here so where's M22 M23 bear with me guys M22 how you skip you see here's 24 how you skip 22 and 23 Oh, M23 right here, which means, let me see something, guys. I really was hoping there was some sort of a horn relay. So if I look at this this way, M23 is right here, which means that's going to be this little 10 amp. God, I ain't got nothing to dig it out, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to have to take a break. I'm going to go to a quick break right quick, go grab some pliers and get a better view of this uh fuse box because obviously what's happening is the horn is still blowing the horn stay blowing when you power supply gonna equal the uh, continuing horn uh, i didn't know that it just told me it was a no start <laughs> uh 
Well, I don't think he knew that. I don't think he got the full. You can't. Of course, you're gonna no start if your battery is disconnected. I got. I gotta go get some breakdown in communication somewhere. I need to talk directly to the customer. I don't want no middleman. I'm going to make a phone call. I'm gonna talk directly to the customer. In the meantime, I grab my set of needle nose pliers and uh, get a better view of this. All right, guys. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. All right, guys. Let's talk a little bit. Okay, here's the. Uh the fuse box the tip them that uh in question where we was trying to find um i was trying to find the two uh, the fuses that feed the horn or they would let the horn blow and when i did when i pulled it up out of the diagram i found out that uh right here guys hope y'all can see that m22 and m23 fuse horn control output so uh i was going on in the tip them it's the output. All right, let's look at uh, 22. What we say? 22 and 23, right? Let's go up here. The location of 22 and 23. Okay, the location of 22 and 23 happened to be. I found one while I was out there. It was just a little hard to see. Okay, so according to this, M22 is right here. M23 right there. So they like uh, basically neighbors except for one fuse in between. Now, but guys, that shouldn't be your concern because uh, obviously the fuse is not blown or you wouldn't be blowing like crazy. So what we need to do is go to, let's go to another, um, let's look at this diagram, guys. Um, yeah, fuse is not your problem. I just needed to disconnect the fuse in order to turn the horn off. So guys, as you can see, Tipham actually took the place well, there's no horn relay per se. The drivers to the horn, as you can see right here, here's the horn circuit, okay? Here's the two fuse I mentioned, 23 and 22 right here, which means they are being fed by drivers inside of the tip of, okay? So according to this, there's no external horn relay, guys. Uh, the drivers are built inside of the tip of. So now what we don't see in this picture is, is the inputs okay uh, for your driver to work there has to be some form of inputs some form of a signal from let's say the customer pressing the horn pad now you well know how a horn pad work as far as a switch horn switch is merely contacts okay when you press on the horn pad the contacts will close okay that closed circuit uh, basically sending a ground signal somewhere had this been a horn relay it likely would have went to pin 85 I want to say a typical ISO relay but it's not there is no horn relay so where is that signal going that ground signal closed ground signal from the horn pad where is it going I cannot see that so <laughs> I don't know now what I will do is uh <sighs> see that's they cut my circuit off right here so I don't know so obviously that is our concern now if that horn what I can do is go to the tip them connector and see if that ground circuit is there if that ground circuit is not there and this horn is activating that is merely a short in the tip of uh, just triggering the horn off for no reason that happens guys but do not just jump to conclusion this tip is almost a thousand dollars you really should do your diagnostic so what I need to do is pull the connectors off of the the tip of connectors in the tip of, and see uh which circuit that is that feed the horn or that comes from the horn switch if i press that horn and that circuit goes ground then yes that's my input but if that circuit is not even ground going to the tip of them yes you merely have a short out tip of them. all right so guys let me go to another break i gotta figure some things out i'll keep you all up to date stay with me don't go anywhere i will be right back uh, welcome back to the channel. We're back at the car. Let me explain something to you. Uh, first of all, I, I'm gonna have to. Uh, I'm gonna need to apologize to you because I physically really don't have any time to show you the proper way to diagnose this. Uh, because yeah, she just called and want to know right away what's wrong with her car. So the quickest way I can go by finding out is to simply uh, swap out a known tip. And what I'm suspecting is. Uh, that signal is corrupt inside of here now what we just saw on the screen computer screen we just saw all we can see is the output 
All right, so remember, guys, uh, fuse 22 and 23. I guess that's these two 10 amps. Uh, they're obviously good because the horn blowing. All I can see is the outputs to the horn. Okay, now, unless that output is <laughs> shorted to power somewhere, uh, which is highly unlikely, that's why that horn is continuing to blow. But I'm suspecting is, uh, the inputs are corrupted inside. Not from the switch, because remember, only thing we need from the horn pad is a ground signal. When you press that horn pad, that circuit will close the ground. And that signal is supposed to come, like I said earlier, to a relay. There is no relay. This drivers are inside. The horn drivers are built inside to tip them. So the reason I'm apologizing is for I'm finna do. Uh, I have to resort to quick quickly that quick diagnostics okay and the quickest way i know how is to simply swap this out right quick and see if that fixed the problem but what i want you guys to know is how to do it you might not have this access you might not have a scan tool and i don't even have my scan tool today so i'm gonna apologize for that because there was some things on the screen i wanted to show you but i have to result uh to such trickery right now so uh Again, we're trying to find out why this horn staying activated. Guys, let me swap this out real quick and uh, I'll get back with you guys. Stay tuned. All right guys, here we go. Let's put this back on here. Go inside and see what happens. I think last time, what did I do? I just turned the key on. Now, I don't know what was wrong with this tip. -um. Obviously, what was wrong with this tip -um was the wiper stay on. <laughs> see, that's what I say guys, you can use a tip -um for many a different reason. I decided to keep the tip -um, even though it was failed for wiper purpose. So, Oh man, I hate to charge this customer. Uh, these tip -ums are expensive. Can you get them used? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, should you? Uh, I don't see a problem in it, but uh, obviously something's going on internal to the tip -um, okay? Uh, and I don't know what because they don't give us that portion of the diagram, guys. So, my horn is not blowing. I have everything hooked up the way it was. So, I really want to know what the inputs to the circuit look like, guys. But I don't have that. I can't see that. So, there's really nothing I can do about that. But I'm going to wrap this video up. That's all I have, guys. Uh, the reason why the horn was staying on because internal drivers to the to the tip on. The key is on, like I say, the wipers are on because uh, <laughs> that tip on fail. That's why we replaced the tip on in the first place because it had the wipers on. All right, guys, I have to wrap this video up. That's all I have. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video.